On this episode of Focus on Tiverton, we visit the Essex Library and talk with Manny Leak, the assistant director, who's going to tell us about what's new at the library. Later on in the program, we have highlights of Tiverton High School's golf banquet, honoring the 2006 team that won the state championship. Later in the program, we take a look at some time-lapse photos of the new Ranger School and see how the project has progressed over the last two months. And at the end of the program, we have the first of a series of segments that will discuss some of the soil contamination issues in North Tiverton. This month, we speak with Gail Carvalho, the president of an act. That and more coming up on this episode of Focus on Tiverton. Assistant Director of Tiverton Library Services and this month I thought we'd be doing a number of different things. First I just want to announce that we do have all federal and state tax forms available at the library. Come right into Essex Library or you could go to the Union Library and if we don't have the tax form handy we can go online and make copies for you. Also today what I'd like to do is give you a brief tour of our young adult section which is located downstairs of Essex Library and we're just going to do a little walk through a little tour and one collection that we do have is what is known as our young adult classics now this is where you would find classics from Dickens you would find S.C. E. Hinton's The Outsiders Catcher in the Rye To Kill a Mockingbird so when students do have to read some of the classics they could come downstairs to the young adult classics section and our books will be available for checkout. Now not only does the Young Adult Collection contain books but they also contain magazines from all the latest issues such as Anime Insider, Entertainment Weekly, Cosmo, uh, Game Pro and also we do carry CDs from all contemporary artists such as John Mayer, Jack Johnson, one of the more popular collections here at Essex Library would be this, would be our anime collection. Not only do we have anime on DVD, but we also carry anime on graphic novel as well. We also have graphic novels from Marvel Comics and DC Comics and other award-winning graphic novels. Also at Essex Library, we do carry the 2007 Rhode Island Team Book Award nominees. Not to mention our young adult collection has a plethora of books on CD, paperback, fiction, and nonfiction. And on a special note, Shirley Karen will be retiring from Essex Library after 30 years of service. Shirley, on behalf of the entire Essex family, we thank you for your support and your dedication. For more information, call 401-625-6796, or you can access our website at www.tibbonlibrary.org. Tiverton Land Trust is an all-volunteer, private organization dedicated to preserving land, open space in Tiverton, Rhode Island. We'd be delighted to have your support. We can be reached at uh, area code 401-625-1300 or on the web www.tivertonlandtrust.org. Bob Murray. I'm the athletic director at Tiverton High School, and um, I said to Coach Anderson when we um, had this uh, experience that we would take care of a banquet, and uh, I knew that we were going to lose a couple of the guys to the to going off to college. And my concern was is that I wanted to purchase rings for the kids, 
And um, the making of rings took anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks, and we were right around the 4th of July weekend when their factory closed. So it made it difficult for the, the rings to come before they went off to school. So Dev sent me an email early on in September to say hello, and we went back and forth, and I, you know, I got a chance to see him a couple weeks ago, and we said, okay, find a, find a date that will work for us. So he said the 18th and the 19th, and here we are on the 19th. And I want to thank the boosters first of all. I, I asked the ladies to come tonight for a specific purpose. Um, each and every one of the four of these, and I believe that this is my booster club. And I know that there are a lot of, I know that there are a lot of people that support them, but this has been the heart and soul of our, our booster club probably for the last four or five years. Um, these four women have done more for our athletic department probably than any group in 20 years. I mean, they've, they've given of their time freely, and they've, and they've done so many wonderful things for our kids. And I thought it would be nice that I'd be able to take you out and give you a quality meal and for, for me to be able to say thank you in a different way, but just to say thank you for everything that you do for my entire athletic department, not just for the kids that are here, but for everybody involved, because I know how much time you put in. And I just want to say thank you for everything that you've done for us. On behalf of the faculty, the staff, uh, and administration at Tiverton High School, I'd like to thank the Boosters Club as well. Thank you, Coach Murray, and congratulations to Coach Anderson and the, and the six boys, Matthew, Devin, Ben, Ethan, Ryan, and, and Mark Ryan. Uh, you know, if, if somebody would have asked me 10 years ago that Tiverton High School was going to win the state championship in golf, I'd have, I'd have probably said to him, I, I think you're nuts. <laughs> um, Andy's always had, you know, we were talking about it at, at dinner, he's always had one or two players, for the most part, one player who was a good high school golfer, but nothing really beyond that. Uh, I think that golf would probably be lucky to, uh, to hit an 80 on a good day. Um, and I, over the last, you know, four or five years, there's been a, a trickle of better golfers coming in. Um, and, you know, a lot of people thought that last year when they won that it was, it was a great upset. Well, you know what, I think the six guys will say, you know what, we could line up any day and compete with anybody in the state. And I think it's a true, it's a neat accomplishment that uh, a school the size of Tiverton High School is able to compete with the likes of Barrington High School in North Kingstown in a, in a Bishop Hendrickson and beat them. And in a lot of people's eyes, it might have been an upset. I think in their eyes, you know what? We played our best golf on this one day, and we were able to beat them. And I think, you know, they should be commended for that because it is a it is a great feat. One of the things that, you know, you're going to walk away tonight with a ring that'll always be on your finger. But the other thing that's neat is that every day you come in. Or, 20 years from now, when you, you have a son or a daughter that's at the high school and you walk into the gym, you'll be able to look up on that wall and you'll be able to see a banner that says 2006 State Golf Champions. And state champions at Tiverton High School has only been two true state champions. And, and the golf team 2006 is one of them. Congratulations again. Uh, it, it's it's quite, a, quite an honor uh, <coughs> to, number one, be speaking in front of you guys right now. But the things that you have accomplished is, is truly outstanding. Congratulations. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I'm pretty sure I can remember when you guys were freshmen, there was something that you said about winning the state championship when you were seniors. And I recall you guys talking about that quite a bit. And then you went off and you, you, you pretty much did what you were supposed to do. And now it leaves it to you guys and a couple of the guys that aren't here right now to kind of hold up that tradition. It would be kind of neat to be able to bring this back for another year. You know, to be able to be able to say that Tiverton's names there again would be outstanding. But win, lose, draw, if it doesn't, I think it was a tremendous experience that, you know, you guys created. And, you know, obviously Mr. Mr. Anderson directed that. And Mr. Anderson has always done a wonderful job dealing with young men. And he's always been able to give you that, that little word of advice. And it might only be a word. Sometimes it's a shoe, but most of the time it's a word. <laughs> you know, and, and it puts you in a direction to take you where you're going. So with that, Mr. Anderson, if you'd come up and just talk to the kids a little bit, and we'll go from there. <laughs> well, needless to say, I'm uh, very proud of their accomplishment. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the parents for doing such a great job raising these young men. <laughs> Boosters Club, the administration. Uh, you know, I know that this is special. Uh, 
I've been coaching in Tiverton since 1968, so I go back, way back, before these young men were born. Uh, I remember Ethan's dad, when I was a gym teacher with a golf club in his hand in 7th or 8th grade, and I think he has the only other banner at Tiverton High School. They won the Eastern Division back in 1972 or something. Five. <laughs> I forget the years, but... You know, but that's an example of where we've come. I was telling a group of people the other day at a, a Christmas dinner I was at. They were kidding us about our state championship golf team. I says, you know, the only other Newport County team to ever win a state championship was Rogers High School. They won it in 1933, and they won it in 1954. So it's been over half a century since the Newport County team has accomplished such a feat as this. So. That's why I know it's special. Uh, some people don't consider golf that important or not. You know, you don't see big crowds and stuff like that. I mean, I've been, I've been a coach for years where I've won state championships on other levels, but never like Bob was saying, the whole state, where the whole state competed. Uh, I was hoping Mr. Amaral will be here tonight to present the, uh, the uh, certificates uh, to the ball players, uh, to the golfers. Because he was also a ball player of mine. He was on back-to-back -back state championships in basketball. And the great thing that I have gratitude for is having the opportunity to work with all these kids over a period of many years now. You know, I can remember talking to the bank, I think it would be my last time I ever speak. You know, here I am at 66 and I'm still getting, you know. But I don't consider myself much to do with this because I know that these five guys right here and also Mark Ryan, uh, Mello, uh, it was a six-man team. We only could bring five people to the state tournament, but all six people had a lot to do with winning the state championship. Uh, Matt said it the other day. We were really a team effort. A lot of schools, even though it's golf, you think it's an individual sport, it's really a team sport, and they would all back one another up. I know that. A lot of people probably don't know that, but that was a big key in these men winning the state championship. There are certain teams I won't mention, but there'll only be one guy coming with one other guy, and they, they kind of ostracize the other players on their own team. I've seen that. And uh, this team didn't do that. They all backed one another, and they all knew their responsibility. Uh, you know, if you have a bad shot, you know, get my mind back on what I do, because every shot's important, you know. I knew they were good. Was I surprised they won? Yeah, I have to admit, I was surprised because I knew, I knew they were capable. Matt said for, for three years, we can win the state championship. And I think when he came and then Devin, you know, I worked for Devin's dad at the Coaxer Country Club. And, uh, you know, it just fed. This guy here came along quicker than anyone ever seen in my life in golf. <laughs> then, I mean, he makes all state as a, as a southpaw when he only played for three years. That's unheard of. Unheard of, you know. Matt turns around this year. He would have been also the individual, but he was more interested in the state championship. But I don't know if people know about eagles in golf, but the guy from Hendrickson had three eagles on all par five holes and only beat Matt by one stroke. And he still could have won if he had a couple of putts down the stretch. You know, it goes one way, it goes the other. But the point is, that's one hell of a performance, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of special things I've seen at Timberton High School over the years. You know, I see... Uh, uh, Allison over there said, you talk about something special, I remember Allison winning the, the Heisman Award, the only girl, girl female ever to win that in high school, that's the best all around girl athlete in the state of Rhode Island, that's pretty special, you know, and I've seen so many great things over the years, and I, I'm just the type of guy, I don't put myself, I call myself the golf moderator, you know, I'm the guy that takes these guys to the matches, you know, I have to kick him in the butt once in a while. I may do that, right? <laughs> the truth, truth of the matter is, you know, they coach themselves, you know, but I tell Matt, would you work with him on this? And he would do that. And, and it just all came together. You know, I know I sat here at the table and I said, thank you for what you did, but what you did for Tiffin in high school is what we believe as coaches and as teachers and as athletic directors and principals. You represented our school the way we believe it should be represented. And we believe that you gave a mirror image of the people that are in our building and the people that live in our community. You won. You didn't make a spectacle of yourself. 
You represented our school with class. You spoke very, very highly of, of the things that occurred, and in some cases spoke very positively of your opponents as you, as you complimented people in receiving your awards. So my way of saying thank you is, is to give you the citation that Mr. Emerald has, has put forth, and we've got it all put together. And then I have, I have your rings, okay, and I know that you've been waiting for them. Dave Moff is a member at the golf course, a coach that he, he gave each, each player, you know, golf balls with the uh, all-state logo on them, the Pro V1s, so uh, don't use them all, put some in your trophy case, will yeah. you? There you go. Congratulations. Joey Hemingway. Basketball. It's almost <laughs> sick to golf. <laughs> <laughs> Dad may have won a division, but he never won one of these babies. <laughs> Congratulations, Andy. And Andy, this is for you. Thank, you, thank, you. thank, thank you. you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you again. Now, I want you to know that this has <coughs> never been done before. I've never, ever, ever bought rings for anyone. Okay? Even when we're one of these. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but you're a first, fellas. <laughs> We're first. All right. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. This way? Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to put this in the cake so I can use it. Take your care of these guys. When you guys get done, maybe everybody can stand together and we can get a nice picture. Get a nice Ethan picture of Yeah, that would be good. Ethan. Ethan. Right, hey,
Liberton Land Trust is an all-volunteer private organization dedicated to preserving land, open space in Tiverton, Rhode Island. We'd be delighted to have your support. We can be reached at uh, area code 401-625-1300 or on the web www.tibertonlandtrust.org. February 23rd, 2003, the Sunday newspaper had an article that um, there was contamination found um, in the road when they were doing the, the uh, Mount Hope uh, interceptor, sewer interceptor project. And one of the neighbors called me frantic uh, because there was some kind of hazardous material in the road right outside of our homes. Um, and so um, we started talking and decided to go there was a council meeting the following night, so we went to the council meeting, as did quite a few of the residents who had read the article. And, of course, we wanted to know what was going on and, and learn as much as we could because especially the people that had young children were extremely nervous about what was here and needed to know more. Um, in those early days, it was very, very hard to get information. Environmental Neighborhood Awareness Committee of Tiverton. The mission is to inform, advocate, and network to the neighborhood. Um, basically keep information flowing to the people that are living through this and also to the state agencies um, and uh, the politicians. So everyone's aware of what's happening all the time and, and is truly updated so that when decisions need to be made, they have all the information they need to be able to make good decisions. Basically, we started the group because it was truly an unknown to us. No one understood what we were dealing with or what we were about to deal with. And um, it just seemed like a good idea to try to organize and um, get as much information as we could and to learn as much as we could about the issue, how it gets handled, the regulations, the laws, and the actual contamination to learn as much as we could. Um, and being organized was the best way to be able to do that. Well, DEM is relatively certain that it came from the old Fall River Gas Company, uh, which was bought by New England Gas, which was bought by Southern Union, <laughs> which is about a mile down the street from here. Um, it is definitely MGP waste. Um, it's ash. It's... Um, coal slag, it's uh, purifier waste, which is the blue wood chips, blue and orange, because there's iron filings in there also. Um, so it's definitely MGP waste. Um, and DEM is, is relatively certain that it came from far of a gas company, because this stuff was not shipped far and wide many, many decades ago. I mean, they didn't have the equipment to do that, number one. Trucks had solid rubber tires. They just didn't move this stuff miles and miles and miles away from gas plants historically. And research shows that, that they put it close by wherever they could. And this area being a wet, low-lying area was perfect. This whole valley right into Fall River was wet. It was low-lying. And these types of materials that were waste for the gas company were perfect for filling low -lying, wet, low-lying areas. It soaked up the water, and it made roads passable. It made, in front of the cow barn, not a mud pit anymore. Um, and so it was used in that context, for the most part, um, to dry up areas and make them passable. There are levels of hazardous chemicals as high as 530 times what's considered safe in a residential area. That's unbelievable to me.